Hello again. In this exercise, writing a children's book for print and e-book in a self-publishing or traditional publishing house um, and going through KDP. But this is the introduction and what I want to cover mostly in this exercise is setting it up for a Kindle e-book, which is quite different than just about everything else. So although it covers general terms, what will be covered in writing a children's book, things you need to know, I'm just covering these in the introduction because a later video will go into this in detail. So a lot of the material is for a print book and a lot of the material is for an e-book and specifically in this introduction, a Kindle book. Now you may wonder how you can get a the similar thing of this into a Kindle book, which is a fixed format. Although Kindle itself uses reflowable text. Let's see how we cover this. Now, in setting up a children's book, you probably have some idea already of what you want to write about. But you need to workshop it. You need to look at what you're going to write. There are some specific rules for children's books. So Google children's book and a phrase that describes your book, such as children's book kangaroo. A general phrase like this will return lots of ideas. And from the books returned that are similar to the sort of book you're thinking of, look at the summary of those books. Think hard and figure out how your book will be different than the published ones. Now this is just common sense to check what's already out there by before putting all your time and energy into a book but so many authors don't do it. Don't be put off by the fact that there are probably a thousand books out there for children um, on kangaroos. What you have to do is put a different twist on your story. Now, right along with planning the book, we'll actually begin setting up the layout. And that's a lot of what I've done in this exercise. This can be a difficult starting point if you plan on doing print and ebook for the same story. Don't try and do both. Print books and e-books have very different properties in the final um, export. I'm designing this e with e-books in mind first, specifically, as I mentioned, the Kindle itself. However, in practice it started life as an ordinary print book. The two main differences are related to the target model. If you develop your print book, much the same as the one I've used here, you may find that it's also suitable as an e-book as well when used on a device, including an actual Kindle. Now by device I mean iPad or anything like that. Even the Paperwhite. And the ancient model Kindle that I use for examples is a Kindle keyboard, which is a very early model, about 2010 I think, maybe even before then. The Kindle and a number of other devices are reflowable. That is, the text flows from page to page. There are no physical pages. And as you can see here, I've got page 5. Well, on a Kindle reflowable, that is irrelevant. You don't have page numbers because, depending on the size of the text you're using, how many pages you've got. So you can ignore page numbers in a Kindle version, but a print version, page numbers look nice. Now, Kindle has a KF8 format, and that's a fixed format. You must, however, export as a suitable PDF file the book that you want to put on the Kindle in fixed format. You can be modified and converted in Word and sent to the Kindle Create program and verified in the Kindle Previewer, or you can send a PDF directly to the Kindle, and I'll show you that in a separate video shortly. Both Kindle Create and Kindle Previewer are available for the Mac and I think maybe for the Windows platform, I'm not too sure. Now there you can see uh, the Kindle keyboard, very early model, and that's the first page. So what's been added to Kindle 8, the KF8 version? support for author-specified fonts, and more book styling options. In other words, you can put your own fonts in there. Kindle panel view or page view for comic books. 
That's very useful. Children's picture books with Kindle text pop-up. Now that's not available on this very early Kindle I've got, so um, I can't demonstrate it. But what it does mean is that you can produce a book that will go onto a Kindle. Now these images are photographed directly from the Kindle Paperwhite. Well, and I should actually again comment that this is the early keyboard version. That's what it's called, Kindle Keyboard. You can see the pages of the book need adjustment in places. The text runs off the right hand side of the page. Now that's something that's easily fixed. What I wanted to demonstrate was that the images do actually stay on the page. They're very good. It's simply a matter of margins. And this is from the PDF file emailed directly to the Kindle. That's how I got it loaded to the Kindle. The images are fine. The text needs adjustment. Easy. OK, now let's look at the book format before we go too much further. This book model has already been created in a previous video that you may find on my YouTube channel. This one and one or two others on the same topic. And you'll find them at that uh, web address there. And if I remember, I'll put this in the description as well, the, video, the YouTube description. So let's look at the layout of the print version and just accept them for the ebook version for now. Remember, for print version, the color is CMYK and for ebook, it's RGB. Margins will be different and bleed will be non existent on the ebook version. So already you can see why there are two versions that should be built if you're doing this for both platforms. You really will need two documents. And you'll need one for the interior and one for the cover as well. On the Kindle version or the ebook version, you only need a single page cover, and that should, of course, be in a separate file. But just use the, the dimensions there, and that will set up this little rectangular book to start with. Create your new document for the internal pages, uh, the content, if you like. And you can see what I've done there. Now, step two is fully developing your main character. Now, there's quite a bit of information here, which I won't read out word for word. You can pause and read that yourself. The best books, though, have unique characters. They're quirky in some way, and I just mentioned this before. Your characters have a funny habit. They look strange. They talk differently. In other words, they stand out. You don't want a character who looks or sounds just like everyone else as in ordinary, unless that, of course, is your storyline. The little kangaroo who was ordinary. Well, but you do want a character that feels really real. And you can have a look at the list on the right hand side for some ideas. Now, very important, write the right length. What's the right word count for a children's book? This is a question you must get right. There are accepted industry standards, and to go outside these is to risk rejection. You need to figure out what age range you're writing for. You can't write for all kids. They cover <laughs> a generation in width. And then write within that word count. Now, the most popular is the third one down, 500 to 800 words, ages 3 to 7, and it's usually a picture book. Now, let's see how we arrived here. Like most writers writing picture books, you should aim for ages 3 to 7, the most common category. If that's you, then shoot for 750 words. That's the sweet spot. If you write a picture book of more than 1,000 words, forget it. You absolutely have to keep it under 1,000 words. That's the most unyielding rule in the entire industry. Slash away until you've whittled it down to, say, 750 words. Now you can see on the right hand side some of the applications I'm using. Affinity Publisher, Word, Kindle, Kindle Create and Kindle Previewer, which I'll show you a look at momentarily. Now important information about images. I'm going to show you that in a moment too. Always use SVG or EPS images if you can. 
If you're absolutely sure your document will never be resized, you might get away with um, other sorts of images. When you upload your file, you may find that your images need to be converted to JPGs. This is a matter for Kindle, for KDP, and we'll look into that shortly. Now, tools you'll find useful for these conversions are Affinity Designer and Publisher, Super Vectorizer, Affinity Photo, and so on. Now, the following video shows how image manipulation is handled. Now, we're looking here at um, the Affinity Publisher document open here. And this particular kangaroo here, and that one there, as a matter of fact, but this one here is one that I've just um, modified to suit the book, uh, to suit this book. Now, it's over here, you'll see on the right-hand side, there's the image there, dragged into a picture frame. And already I've modified this text slightly in the text box to bring it into line, and now I haven't measured it yet, but to bring it into line with the smaller size screen of the Kindle keyboard model, which is a 3.4.3 operating system on the Kindle. Now this is one of the very early Kindles, and it's got a 6 inch screen. Now we have to make sure if you're going Kindle, although it's black and white and this is colour, not everybody's going to have a colour Kindle. And if you're modifying this for Kindle, be aware that the smallest size screen is 6 inches. Now we'll have to fit that in there and you can see from those images that I photographed earlier on that uh, the text will overflow over the edge of the screen. Anyway, we're looking at the images. Now that image there is a vector image. Now what I've done with that, just let me drag in um, the image here. Now there's the there's the original image, Kangaroo New PNG, and that one there, you can see that's the older image, there's the, there's the Kangaroo image. Bring that up with Affinity Photo, and there's the image there. There's the original image. Now I highlighted the image You'll need to unlock your iPad first. Now oh, there's, there's Siri having a word with me. Never mind, we'll ignore Siri. The selection brush tool I use to go around and select the kangaroo. Now I won't do that now because it takes too much time. You know how to do that, but I want to take the kangaroo off the background. And that's quite a large image. You can see the image there, 8958 pixels by 8850 pixels, quite large. But it's not a vector or EPS or SVG image to start with. It is, in fact, a JPG image, and I wanted to get rid of the white background. The way that image was created, if I just use remove white background, there are transparencies in there, and you can see the transparent background through the kangaroo in places which is no good for when I want to vectorize it. So the end result, highlight that with the selection tool, simply copy it, and then create a new file from the clipboard. And we end up with that. Now that's a nice new file. It's about the same size. It is, the, in fact, the same size as the original, but no background. Now that's the one I saved as kangaroo new hence kangaroo new png i exported that to kangaroo new png i didn't do the thing about no background i just exported it and that's the result there now what i did was vectorize it with that program i mentioned called super vectorize super vectorize 2 in fact now this is very handy. It does cost. It's not a. It's not a. I think about thirty dollars US. I think, from memory, um, and I've no relation to these people. I don't sell the program or anything. I've just found it one of the easiest to use vector programs around. You 
load in your import your image I've set it to mode 2 a 33 the color numbers of 33 I don't know that gives it a fair tonal range if you set that to eight colors or something like that you get a very basic image stack scan enhance the edges 0.4 now when you do this this can take a little while it'll come up down here processing the image and it can take a you know a moment or two to do it but this is what I found best for this don't experiment too much or you'll end up ruining the picture you've got to start again then you export the image and the image obviously exports to the new vectorized SVG now how do I know that's a, a vector let's open that up in open with affinity designer now that's opened up there and you can see there there's all the curves and you can see the multiple colors that have been used in that that's really interesting that it does that but they're all vectors and you can see there each one of those now the good thing about it being a vector image as I mentioned was that just let me hide that for a moment designer hide super vectorize hide super vectorize let's hide that too and we might as well hide that one while we're at it so what we're left with is there now that's not a vector there you can see this is pre vectorized and then post vectorized comes after now the good thing with that being a vector image which I've pulled into there kangaroo new vectorized see in the top right hand side is that it doesn't matter how big or small I make that it's not going to lose resolution there's our controller there doesn't matter if you make that big you're not going to end up with a pixelated image so you can move that around however you like there we go now that's all on that side of the screen as you can see and that will probably take care of the parts of the document that we're not worried about now I've taken the liberty of moving ahead a little bit here let's get off this for a moment you can see that master A is the first document and master B is the second document now master B has page numbers left and right can't see them there at the moment but they are there and master A doesn't because when that translates down here we don't want page numbers on that first title page but what I do want them is I've started a section there page one and page two and you can put them in there or not depending on how you want that one there is master A the right hand side you see and there's no page number no layers of page number on master B there's a top page number there and a top page number there now I've only done 11 12 13 pages what I want to show you on page 13 which may not be clear on the others that's simply a background rectangle you can see that there but it's all the way out to the bleed edge so that it can trim off neatly along the trim line along the bleed line that's the center of the spine there's another image that goes across two pages but it's also right out to the bleed line now there's a problem with this image it's on the left hand side and the text is on the right hand side I want it to be different but in the page before it there's text on the right hand side an image on the right hand side so that the reader if they're on a Kindle will see that image then they'll see that image 
Now you may not want that unless you've got text in there or text in there. That's one of the editing things you have to uh, be concerned about. And that's, that's all I really want to say at this stage because we're not going to do the whole story. I particularly wanted to show you about the vector images. That's just an embedded document. That's a very small image. Now that may not change, but if the size of the book changes or you decide to enlarge that image, it may turn out to be quite pixelated. That image there has been vectorized. But as you can see around the edges, I have to do that again because that's a very bad image. Very badly vectorized. I think I just used the eight colors on that one. That, of course, doesn't need to be vectorized, although it wouldn't hurt to do it because it's a full-sized image. And I may vectorize all of those at a later date. And I think that image is already vectorized. That's already a vector image. And, of course, there's none there. And the book goes on right through to the last page. Make sure with these picture books you have an even number of pages, 32. Otherwise, you'll find yourself inserting blanks to make up the difference. OK, now let's pause that there and complete the exercise. Now, this exercise, this part of the exercise, is the export the PDF part so that we can have a look at Kindle Create and Kindle Preview. So I've adjusted the text slightly so it's inboard a little bit more and should fit on the pages but it's not accurate it was very roughly done so we'll see what happens let's go to export ignore and continue i'm not worried about the pre-flight at the moment although you should worry about it let's check the pages page 10 to 11 we only want to go down to 10 to 11 we could do 12 and we could go to 13 1 to 13 I'm going digital high quality because that's what we want. Now export that, send it to downloads, and there's already one there which it should overwrite. Yes, let's replace that one. There we go. Now that's, that's the PDF version. We'll just do a quick check at that, and you can see that that's done in the spread mode, which is not what I want. Now, uh, let's go back and do that again. File, export. Now, this is, a, this is a trap for unwary players. We don't want all spreads. We want all pages. That's more like it. And 1 to 13. Now, this is something I do quite a lot and have to go back and do it again. So, I'm hopefully not the only one who does this. I'm sure it's a common problem. But there we go. It's a good example of what you have to watch for when you're trying to do things too quickly. So slow down and let's get this right. There we go. And that's better. Now there's each item on its own page. There's that very rough kangaroo again. And the text, the font, of course, is not good. But this is an exercise. And there's, I mentioned before, about the two pages side by side with text and we'll see what happens there in a moment so let's just close the acrobat reader and we can drop that out of the way just close that because what i want is the kindle create version File, New Project. Now, this is important. The reflowable is text only. Format your manuscript from a text-based file for digital publication. And that's what you'll get. Now, I've done quite a lot of video work on doing that. And I'll do more. I've got no doubt. You can select for comics. Now, comics have their own special requirements. Um, and we'll do that later. But what I want to do now is a print replica.
because this one you'll notice allows you to send a PDF file comics and that just says continue reflowable is a doc is a word document in other words and I don't want to go to all the trouble of converting that to a word document so this is fixed format and you can see they've got devices there so choose the file And there it is there it's in downloads where I put it and it's the most recent file so I've got the got the um, got it sorted to the top now we'll open that file it imports it and there it is and you can see as it goes down the page so forth and so on and you think well okay that looks very much like there's 12 and 13 You'll note it starts on page 12 because page numbering, I've got it in sections, does not start on page 1. That's actually the page numbering starts on page 1. Now because this is fixed format, that's quite valid. But how do we find out what it looks like? Now remember, Kindle Create has a previewer and we can see what it looks like in preview. And there it is. That's a tablet and everything else is fixed. You can go landscape. Be careful of the landscape, it chops the bottom off. So again, you'll be constrained if you're forcing it into landscape. You'll have to move your images around. So let's go back to portrait mode and leave it there. Now let's have a look. Shall we go right back to page one? There it is, the bushfire. Joey was a very, very small kangaroo indeed. text as well on the page he stayed with his mother every night and so forth <clears throat> now the the thing is this doesn't tell you what sort it doesn't actually show a Kindle this is color and it's a slightly bigger uh, tablet so all the text is on the page there and there's our normal pages and you can go right back to page one there now that's all there is to it. If you go a phone, that just gives you a warning about screen sizes. And you can see that a PDF file, if sent as a fixed format story, is perfect. That's the end of the preview. Now let's close Kindle Create. Um, I could say you'll notice it saves it in a directory. File name, file of type KCB. Oh, and there's a um, an update we might as well install the update okay now we're recording again and I've brought up Kindle Previewer which is in reality the same thing that's attached to Kindle Create, although this is standalone. And you can bring the same file in. Open book. There's downloads. Children's picture book interior. Oops, wrong one. Is that what we're looking for? There we go, the KPF file. And there again, you can see that goes quite well on that. Now, I could send that Kindle via that document via email to my Kindle and we could have a look at it on there. But I won't bother for this exercise because that's just um, filling in time, I feel. Okay, that's it for this one.